What's up, y'all? Carolina Jack Hot Time checking in Sunday, August 27th, of the year of our Lord, 2017. And uh, we're jumping full bore into college football season. And I'm going to do one of these videos, or try to do one at least once a week. Uh, this is just, you know, not really a recap of what happened last week, but this is uh, more talking about uh, looking at lines, betting lines on games coming up next week. And, uh, what I think is going to happen, looking at histories, looking at uh, performances of teams in the past, and uh, yeah, maybe even throwing a little bit of uh, personal uh, preference in there. We're going to uh, look at what happened last night in the world of college football. We were uh, giving a little treat, a little appetizer, if you will. There were five games on a slate. I was able to actually watch uh, a little bit on two of them. Uh, the One of the games or, that I know of wasn't televised. Um, it's kind of like week zero in high school football down here in South Carolina. They have a week zero where, you know, about a third of the teams play games. And then they'll get a bye week later on in the season. Uh, we had that last night. I don't know if I like this or not. Um, yeah, I think some of the – probably not really well prepared, but some of them were just really interesting matchups where a lot of teams just – really traveled a long way and uh, played some teams they probably were not used to playing. Oregon State went on the road to Colorado State in the game that was supposed to be close and actually got woodshedded by Colorado State. The Beavers got woodshedded, 58-27, 31-point loss. Bad for a Pac-12 uh, team to be losing that bad to a – um, Mountain West foe, but they did. Uh, Brigham Young, BYU, Cougars, as expected, beat Portland State. Looked like a little tougher than uh, should have been, 20 to 6. Um, South Florida, 42 22 over San Jose. I saw that game, which I was heard a lot of uh, interest in that one for myself because um, South Florida was the last team to beat my Gamecocks in the last uh, our bowl game last year, the Birmingham Bowl. They beat us uh in overtime um and they are expected by a lot of people to go undefeated this year they don't play that tough of a schedule they've opened up at number 19. uh they won 42 22 but it wasn't really easy in the first half south uh, florida got it brought to them by san jose um if any of y'all watch that game uh has anyone ever seen a smaller sparser crowd in a damn co uh, high college football game. I don't know that I have. I mean, there were more empty seats there than, God dang, I don't know what. The 1988 Atlanta Braves comes to mind. When we finished like 54 and 108 in Tom Glavin's rookie year, <laughs> like Atlanta Fulton County Stadium and have like 2,000 people in it when it's playing the Astros. I mean, that's how damn empty that stadium was. It was fucking pathetic. But anyway. South Florida and Quentin Flowers, dark horse Heisman candidate, come back, win that game strong, 42-22. And then Stanford, as expected, uh, gives Rice a uh, gridiron beat down 67. Looking at some games that are coming up this coming Thursday, the 31st, uh, Friday the 1st, and Saturday, September the 2nd, I have written down a list of games for you to watch as far as the betting lines and just games that, you know, I feel like uh, – Somebody's going to pull an upset, uh, you know, and I'm by no means an expert, but I do fancy myself one, and uh, I enjoy uh, looking at this stuff and picking games and uh, seeing what happens. Last year, one of the Facebook groups I'm in, I was in there with about 30 guys. It was an ESPN challenge we did, and I actually finished first, uh, believe it or not. The year before that, in 2015, I uh, finished uh, a close second. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not an expert, but... Uh, I do pretty well, and uh, I try to stay unobjective in a lot of this stuff, but sometimes I do let feelings get in the way. So let's jump into it. Let me show you what I've got, and y'all can compare it to what you may have, and uh, you know, maybe take something from what I've got, and uh, you know, maybe add it to what you've got, or maybe you could throw some comments down in the comment box below. I welcome them all. I welcome thumbs up. I welcome thumbs down. Hey, if you responded to it, it means you watched it. You know what I'm saying? So let's jump into this thing full bizarre uh, Thursday the 31st. First, let me watch this one real quick. Uh, an FCS versus FCS upset that uh, you need to keep an eye on. It happens every year. One of the uh, FBS, former Division I AA teams, knocks off a uh, FCS team. 
And this year, uh, no exception, it's going to happen again at some point in time. Look for this one. Youngstown State on the road on Saturday at Pittsburgh. Youngstown went to the FCS championship game last year and lost a close game to James Madison. Uh, they're loaded. They're loaded every year. They have uh, incredible talent for the FCS level. They're on the road at Pittsburgh, who is uh, coming off a pretty good year, uh, but has lost a lot of skill position players. Uh, they lost James Conner, their running back, who uh, made that comeback from cancer and had a good year last year. They lost their quarterback, Nathan Peterman, and they lost my man. My man. My main man, their place kicker, Chris Blewett. If y'all don't know why I like Chris Blewett, just go back to uh, early November 2016, watch a YouTube video of the last play of the Clemson game. It's good, motherfuckers. That's why I like Chris Blewett. But anyway, he's gone, and uh, Youngstown State uh, it could be crying for an upset there, so watch that one. I don't think it's going to happen, but it could. Thursday, 8-31, 2016, four days away. Tulsa on the road at Oklahoma State, uh, Stillwater, uh, you know, Oklahoma State's everybody's darling to win the Big 12 this year. Uh, they got a good quarterback, Mason Rudolph. They got a lot of good players coming back on skill positions. Um, my question is exactly uh, why? I mean, how, many, what, how, how many Big 12 championships have they won in the past 10 years? I mean, I, you, could, you have to go back a long time. You gotta go back a long time to see what the heck they've really actually done. And when I think of Oklahoma State, I think of their coach, Mike Gundy, and that damn tirade he did about eight or ten years ago when I was picking on his damn quarterback in the media and he's saying, He's a kid. I'm a man. Y'all wanna talk about somebody? Y'all talk about me. I'm a man. I'm forty years old. That's why I think about them. They're kind of a joke, but they're not really. Uh, yeah, I do think they'll win that game at home uh, against Tulsa, but uh, uh, not by 17 and a half points. Tulsa puts up a ton of points. They put up a ton of points. It's probably going to shoot out probably something in the 50-something, 40-something range or the 40-something, 30-something range. I don't see them beating Tulsa by 17 points, even though it is in Stillwater, which is uh, really known as a tough place to play. Not um, Oklahoma, or excuse me, Ohio State versus Indiana. Uh, Indiana is a 21 point underdog to Ohio State. Last time Ohio State took a football field, they lost 31 to nothing. Yes, I know it was against Clemson, they were the eventual national champions. I know this, but did y'all see how many points NC State put up against Clemson? Hmm? Did y'all see how many points that Pittsburgh put up against Clemson? Hmm? Florida State, hmm. uh, they could be scored on, okay? And uh, Ohio State, I mean, something was wrong there, uh, bad wrong, and uh, hopefully they got it fixed, but I, I just, I, they've got a good quarterback, JT Barrett, he's been there since 1999. Uh, I don't see them uh, losing to Indiana on the road in uh, Bloomington, but I don't see them winning by 21 points either. I think this is going to be a game that goes down to the beginning of the fourth quarter at least. So uh, look for that one to be closer than the spread indicates. Boston College at NIU. I don't think Boston College is that good of a team. Their defense is really good. Their skill positions, their offense, absolutely horrid. Sucks out loud. I look for NIU to cover the spread and actually win this game. North Carolina State versus South Carolina in Charlotte. North Carolina State, six-point favorites. Uh, I understand that a lot of people hate South Carolina because they don't live up to expectations ever. Uh, this is going to be different. This is our year. The Boomcocks are here, ready to stay. Jake Mentley warmed up. Our running back team warmed up. Skill positions, ready to go. Offensive, defensive line are question marks, but they will gel. There is no way North Carolina State is beating us in Raleigh. Columbia, Charlotte, or the moon, for that matter. Uh, take South Carolina to win the game and the points on that one. Temple at Notre Dame. Notre Dame, 17-point favorites. Everybody's expecting big things this year from Notre Dame, quite frankly, because uh, they're Notre Dame, uh, and that's their name. Uh, they were 4-8 and eight last year. They lost some games, and but they were by close margins. Most of them, their biggest loss actually was only by 17 points, and that was to USC, who turned out to be the fifth best team in the country. Uh, look for this to be a closer game than what's advertised, but I do look for the Fighting Irish to take the victory in South Bend, uh, say by at least 10 to 12 points. Uh, Kentucky on the road at Southern Miss. Uh, Kentucky's a 10 and a half point favorite. Uh, exactly why? 
Uh, they lost last year in their opener at home in Lexington to Southern Miss by 10 points. And now they're a favorite by 10 half points. I don't really know what they've done to upgrade, except by beating lower tier teams in the SEC. They've not beaten a Florida. They've not beaten a Georgia. They've not beaten a Tennessee in years, years. Right? And I don't look for any of that to change. They did have an upset win last year against Louisville, but really was it that much of an upset? I think that we've all established by looking at the games against Houston, looking at the bowl game against LSU, and then looking at that game that Louisville was just not all down that last year. So uh, Kentucky, uh, if they win, it's going to be a squeaker. It's going to be a field goal type game. And uh, quite frankly, I look for some Pitts to make it two in a row against the Wildcats in H.H. Roberts Stadium in Hattiesburg. Uh, watch this one, UMass at Coastal Carolina. Coastal Carolina is going to woodshed UMass. That team right there is just waiting to bust out. This is their first official year in Division I. Um, their coach doing great things. They did great things in FCS. One of the biggest up-and-coming programs ever. That's going to be another uh, USF type team. Coastal Carolina is going to turn UMass around and give them a swift kick quite squarely in the rear end. Uh, Georgia Southern on the road at Auburn. They are 35-point underdogs. Yes, I do agree the Eagles are going to lose this game to Auburn. 35 points? No, I don't see it happening. Georgia Southern has got some new coordinators coming in this year. The reason they lost so many games last year is they kind of abandoned the run game and tried to start passing the ball. When has Georgia Southern ever passed the ball? They don't. Uh... That wishbone's coming back. They're going to give Auburn fits. And Auburn, I'm not sold on them. Nobody stole on Jarrett Stidham doing anything great. The last time I saw them play on a regulation SEC football field, they played Alabama, and they got absolutely embarrassed. Uh, they will win the game, but I look for it to be more than a 14 to 17-point range. It's not going to be 35 points, I can tell you that. Auburn's not beating anybody by that much. Louisville at Purdue. It's Indianapolis. Uh, Louisville's actually a 26-point favorite. Whose home game really is this? Uh, it's probably closer a little bit geography-wise to Purdue because it is in Indiana and Indianapolis, but Louisville's not that far away from there. Uh, and quite frankly, I'm sure they'll have a lot more fans show up for it in Lucas Oil Stadium. Uh, I do agree that Louisville probably will win the game, but Purdue, coached by former Western Kentucky Head coach Jeff Marom, they're going to be dangerous. Watch out for Purdue. Uh, they are going to be able to recruit some athletes out there, and um, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the future. I look for the Boilermakers to make a comeback uh, as far as in their football uh, record and, and what they do on the field. They're not going to beat Louisville. They're not going to lose to them by 26 either, though, and this is going to be a statement for Jeff Marom. Uh, Vandy at Middle Tennessee, watch out for that one. Uh, Vanderbilt could lose that game. Middle Tennessee, their quarterback, Brent Stock still uh, very dangerous and uh, picked to finish first in the Sun Belt. I don't know. I think they might embarrass the SEC in that one. They're on the road at Middle Tennessee. That's a rivalry game. Uh, watch out for the Blue Raiders. Uh, Tennessee uh, is only a four-point favorite at uh, a game against Georgia Southern and Mercedes-Benz Dome. Let me tell you something, people. Tennessee's going to be better than a lot of you people think this year. Everybody makes fun of them. They talk about the champions of life, and they talk about this, that, and other, and pick on them. But uh, quite frankly, uh, Butch Jones, uh, in this game, he's going to be playing for his job. And uh, I think he's going to win this game, and I think he's going to win it big. Do I think it's going to save his job? No, I don't. Um, I think Butch Jones is going to be fired sometime this year, uh, regardless of what his record is, because quite frankly, I don't think he fits at Tennessee. He don't fit when they hired that guy. I didn't think he fit. He's a Midwestern dude with a buzz cut that's been from – from down western Michigan and Cincinnati or wherever the hell he's been at to Tennessee, it makes no sense. Look for them to win this game. It's going to be more than four points. Georgia Tech, Justin Thomas is gone. Some of their skill position players are gone. Their running back also gotten hurt. They're going to win this game by at least two touchdowns. It's not going to save Butch's job, but uh, it will attract some interest to their program, and I think they in the, uh, will – end up looking at Appalachian State coach Scott Satterfield. Mm-hmm, yeah, because they're going to go back to somebody that's from the South. Uh, finally, uh, watch Ch uh, Colorado State versus Colorado. Colorado State won big last night. Uh, Cal at UNC. Look for UNC to cover that spread, but more than that, Michigan versus Florida. 
Look for Michigan to win by more than that. That's my picks this week, guys. Come on, jackpot. Stay tuned to see how I did. Push, and I'm out.